create custom report. Custom report, sorry. Yeah, custom. Okay, and I open this. Now I have to give a name. Yep, so CR underscore test. Okay, report type will be advanced. Temporary report, uh, I told you it will be deleted after 24, 48 hours based on the settings. Enable as web service, select when you are using it for integrations, then for sure it has to be enabled. And optimize for performance, if it is checked, it will show only the data sources which are indexed. And if you want to see yours, right, let's do this. So today let's try something else. Uh, let's use a data source of company. Okay, nothing there. But yeah, better to, to use that, the other one that you were using. What was that? All active and? Dominated. Okay, I click on okay. And then we have a page where you can select the fields. Employee ID, name, then I have say date of birth, hired. Location. And then we also saw that you can remove this worker and put company as well. And then you can have the ID, the reference ID of the company. Similarly, you can have here location. And you can have the location ID or again the reference ID for that. Let's say I want location type for this. Okay, so this was this is just the same thing, the name, the fields. Sorting your wish filter. Now Let's say you want this report and you want all the employers which have higher date greater than or you say you got a requirement that okay create a report and, and tell us how many are the employees which are hired this year. Okay, so that means what you will do is in filter what will be our logic that higher date should be greater than or equal to what? 0101 0, 0, 2022, right? So that means anyone hired which has a higher date of 1st January or after that is eligible for this. Okay, now I click on okay. And let's run or I'll just test it. So if you see these are the persons and these are their higher dates. So all of them have after one one. Yep. And you can have multiple filters. Here. There is no such thing that you can have only one condition here. You can have or conditions like for example, you say this one. You can add another one and say location in the selection list 
and you can choose any, right so now what is our condition that all the employees hired after on or after 11 2022 and their location is this so now we have and condition so if i now run it right so there is no data because there is no employee with such conditions right now if i put instead of and i make it or in the filter if i go here instead of and if i make it or and then i click on okay now the data should come because now it's our condition so everyone who's hired after or they have that particular location will come up yep yeah. now if i do again an edit so you are clear with the filter prompt this filter tab right it is used to add any filter now there is another thing here which is called sub filter right so if i have to ask you what is a filter then your answer will be that filter is to you know just filter on the report output based on the fields which are part of the primary business object right so all this hire date location and whatever you want to use here if you are using a filter then those fields should be part of the primary business object in sub filter you can add condition based on the field which are part of related business object like here you have location company you can have dependents and all those stuff right so if you want to put a condition there you can choose a related business object here first let's say company and i can put a condition here reference id equal to you can give some value 1 2 3 something like that right so that kind of thing so it's a very frequently asked question that when you create a custom report what's the difference between a filter and a sub filter right so filter is used to filter the results based on the fields which are part of the primary business object and sub filter is used for filtering the records based on the fields which are part of the related business object so even though if you have used that related business object in the list of these fields or not you can still add it there and and do your filtering yep and sometimes they ask which one gets executed first filter or sub filter we don't care about that whatever happens but ideally the way workday works at the back end is it first execute sub filter and then it executes the filter okay and if you want to add more you can add another one right for location and you can add multiple add another one and if you click on this remove button it will remove that right clear about the difference between filter and sub filter okay now comes prompts but before we go to prompts let's see the other one output you don't do anything here you don't touch it output type remains a stable and that's it there is nothing to be done in the output tab then comes the share tab right so in the share tab by default when you create a report the default one is don't share report definition this means that if you create this report it is owned by you the user with which you are logged in and it is not shared with anyone that means if you search for it 
only you will be able to see it if i search with the report name that you have created it will not be visible to me why because it's not shared with any if i click on this share with all authorized users then what will happen is all the users which have access to this data source right as part of workday security if they have access to this data source which is all active and terminated worker plus they have this view custom report and all that custom report type of permissions then they will be able to see okay meaning all the users which have the proper rights of this data source and of custom report running viewing editing they will be able to view and edit this report then the last option here is share with specific authorized group and users in this one you can specify either a security group so all the users which are part of that group will be able to view this report or you can share it with a very specific user right a very common use case whenever we create what we do is we click on this share with all authorized users right and if say the report is to be some business user has asked you uh, to create a report which should give basic employee information with some filter condition and he says that okay you share it with me so that i should be able to run it on a daily basis in that case you will create this and then share it with the very specific user like say if i want to share it with a very specific user then i will do like this so now i or this employee only these two people will have access to this report okay then comes the advanced tab right in the advanced tab again it only makes sense when you enable this enable as web service so if say when we created this report then we got that option right and we didn't select that but later on if you say by mistake forgot and now you want to make this report as web service enabled you will just come and enable this one here and that's it this thing will auto populate the web service api version and the namespace and that's it now it says so whenever you enable the report as web service what happens is whenever you have used this related business object there is an extra thing that you need to add those related business object here so if you just click on this it will just show only those two so you have to just declare them here that's it now if you click on okay it will save so basically all these are like select queries right selecting data oh, right uh, regrouping and all so in case of parallel integrations for example if a file comes in if we have to insert the data and into right so that's data. that's not that's not via reports that's separate that's via web service so that's separate this is this is just extracting data out extracting of extracting this is like basically select data view select and view correct okay and then what one thing which i also want you to show is let me see if it has dependent data right and then it does it have okay and say very frequent a very common use case say if you want to select a field and you want to read its direction uh, its description there are these three dots right so if you see this any all locations and you want to know what this what will this field do click on that and here is the description that it returns all locations for workers primary and additional positions include both active and inactive locations So let's see that. 
click on OK. OK, alerts you can ignore. And run. So there is no dependent data. There is location type and all location types. So now what I want to show here is that there, there are some fields which will have only one value, like legal name, employee ID, right? Each employee will have only one employee ID. So these type of fields are called single instance fields, meaning only one value. But there are fields like dependents. There are fields like these types and locations, right? Which can be multiple. So like you see here, there are two local office and training center. Right, so these are multi instance fields. Okay, now this is fine. I hope you have understood till this part. We are left with one which is prompts. Now, say the user wants, user which have earlier told you that, okay, I want the report with all the employees which are hired on or after 1 1 2022 but now that user says okay don't hard code the date give me an option that when i run the report at that time i should choose the date and then it should give me the result meaning i want it dynamic right i don't want the report every time go and edit the report and change the date and then run it instead it should give me an option at the time of running the report right so in that case these prompts come into picture let me remove this location part here now you have to focus on this part so how i'm making it dynamic right right now we have a condition that hired it greater than or equal to value specified in this filter which is 1 1 2022. So now, if we have to change and make it dynamic, the comparison type, let's see what all values are here. So here it says value from another field or prompt the user for value. And then prompt the user for value and ignore the filter condition if the value is black. Right? So it's pretty descriptive here. Let's use this one prompt the user for the value. And the comparison value has by default becomes a default prompt. Now, that's it. This is the modification that we have to do in the filter tab. And then in the prompts, we come here and I will just check this one, which says populate undefined prompt defaults. I will just click on that and it will automatically bring it up. So higher date is the default prompt. Label for the prompt alias XML. This is for the, the web service thing. And default type is determine value at runtime and then no default value. Right. So let's keep it like this, right? And you can make it as required or not required. Do not prompt at runtime. You can even give that option. In that case, what you will do is you will specify a default value. Right. Let me let me do it one by one. So first I will say no default value and I click on OK. Now, if I run it, it will ask me a date, higher date. So if I choose 01012022 and click on OK, now it will run only for this date. Okay, so let's choose another one. One one is this, rest all are three two. So if I give three two, then only I should get seven records. So let me say zero three. Okay, so yeah, so our prompt is working. Now, if you see, if you run, then always this is coming as blank, right? So you have to enter it. Now, if I have to specify a default that I don't, I should not be giving it every time. Edit. 
go to your prompts and then here it says no default value now you specify specify your default so now you give it 0101 2022 now if you click on okay and if you run now it will default this value but you can change it so it gives this value you can directly run it or you can change it so if i give here a 03 and okay so i can do that now there is another one the user says whenever i am running that report it should give me that date meaning if i'm running it today it should show there 18th of april if i'm running it tomorrow the prompt should show me 19th of april so how we will do that is in the prompt instead of specify default value we will give this third option which is determine default value at run time and here you can say today so you have all these work day delivered fields today 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 plus 1 today minus x days and all that stuff you can we can even create our own such kind of fields but that is our next topic so let's do it today and i click on okay so now the date will come as today's date which is 14th of april if i run nothing will come up. any questions yes no so these are predefined values today mm. yeah today and you also have current current moment So can we do it like um, uh, 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 in sequence? We do right six date minus one or plus one something. So hmm. can we even yeah. do that? Yeah, yeah. So you have today plus one. Okay. You have plus today one. plus one day. That kind of stuff you have, and you can create your own. That we will see yeah. tomorrow. But then yeah, this is this one. Okay. Now you can. what i can do is i can say default value at run time and let me give today and i can put select here do not prompt at run time so now what will happen is i'll click on okay and if i run it it will not ask me for the value because i have selected this do not prompt so now if i run it it will directly run and that's it reason because we have selected do not prompt edit let's go to prompts and then we can remove this one make it and you can make it required as well here okay now let's say the user again come back has come back with a new requirement he says i want right now the condition is i am giving a value and anything any person hired on or after that date is coming up now he says i want a range i should give from date and to date and whoever is hired on or in between that should be there in the report yep in that case what we will do so we have to put a condition here in the filter saying hired it greater than or equal to and prompt user for value yes because we have to prompt it instead of default prompt let's give another value we can you can give any value here but since it's to and from i prefer to give so this is my starting prompt then again the same date and now here again less than so i have greater than or equal to and less than again value specified in filter no we want the user to prompt so i'll say prompt user for value and here i will give ending prompt 
so now i have two prompts one is starting and one is ending now again we'll go to prompts and whatever you have here you just delete it and again just click on this populate undefined prompt default as you do it it will populate that and now you can change the the label right like you say this one is from date this one is to date similar here to underscore date and here from underscore date. okay this is no default value or let me say a default value let me specify 01012022 and this one i will give that ending prompt i will say determine default value at run time and i will say today and i will make both of them required click on okay okay and run so now if i run now it is asking me from date and to date i can change whatever i want and then if i run it will only give me that particular stuff clear on prompts yes no yes okay now will you be able to create these reports you should be able to yes okay now we have seen these uh, what i added let's say if we want to give some prompts on other thing let me go edit right filter again let's say i now i want on location as well location frequently used in the selection list and instead of value specified i will say from the user for value and here i will say say default prompt okay now you go to prompts and then again check this now your default prompt will come up fine no default value keep it okay and now if you run it will give you that prompt as well so location location you can choose so let me choose what was that melbourne click on okay and then you get all this stuff now let's see let's move to the next topic fairly complex one and all that uh, we now the say the business user which gave you this requirement right uh there is another system say an external system is there which is saying that he that system needs the same data but in an xml format and he needs a web service okay meaning we should give him a link he should call that link in his web browser give the user id password and that's it he should get the data now to do this stuff if say you are using any other erp like people soft oracle sap anything what do you think we will have to write a code and and do some build right how much time will it take approximate i think based on the clients they need uh... we have to create xml and then we need to expose those those right so right so you are from people soft background no no i am from java background right in java also when you say you have to create say you have you have a query right which gives you data now you have to expose that as a web service it takes time 
right yes it, it, yes you need to write some code and all that code thing. yeah now that's where i that's where i love work day the most now say we have created this report right which is fairly simple okay. anyone can do it yeah. now the same data has to be exposed as web service right so we have yeah. to make sure that in the advanced tab we have enabled this as a web service now now that's it now it will take 30 seconds to expose it as a web service so you click on this related action go to web service click on view urls and you select your like this is just the that parameter you will get and okay now you have all these options if the vendor says i want a json web service that when i call that web service it should give me json data then you what do you do is you copy this url and give it to him if he says i want csv data you copy this url and give it to him if he says he wants some google data related stuff okay you get it if he wants rss which is i think for uh, showing it on a mobile screen and all those kind of stuff right there you just copy this url give it to him if it's a simple xml right let's start try with this xml the vendor says i want xml using the web service so you copy this url right now i will open another incognito tab and then here paste enter now it is asking me this password so i will give them the password and that's it you got the data right and then you just click on that okay where is this say i copy the url and then i will put that and then the json got downloaded right so let me show it up so this is where it came up all that data these were our fields and it came up yep so that's how simple work days even this technical part of kind of exposing it as a web service is just a 30 seconds job no coding <laughs> so when i'm having one query here mm mm-hmm. so uh, if we take this as a reverse uh, as you mentioned that if we want to expose it we have to create a uh, user Okay, and need to provide that. Uh, let's say uh, from workday uh, via AIC integration, it goes to some other app which is consuming, and we want to see the response. Like uh, we are trying to debug something, or we wanted to know if there is some failure or something. So mm-hmm. while t- uh, seeing the response, if we will ask them to share the same thing, right? So for seeing that, do we need username password? Like for us. as a work day like we have sent the request okay and uh, some app is consuming and uh, we notice that there is some issue so we wanted to know whether no they uh, will it's hmm. it is from our side that service is exposed okay now and they, they are, are going calling to con- that service correct. correct they are going to consume it call it mm-hmm. whatever error if they get they will get that error in their system and then they will have to reach out to us that okay we are facing this error because we will not be able to know from our side it's just a service which is exposed if mm-hmm. they are facing any issue while calling mm-hmm. that service and all that then they have to let us know in work day yeah. we will not be able to know mm-hmm. that what error they are getting unless they tell us this is the error okay sorry uh, so i got your point uh, my question was there only like uh, when uh, what actually they would be sharing to us let, let's say they got the error it would be the same xml format only sam response yeah, it will be like it will be general error like authentication okay. error or authorization error that kind mm-hmm. of stuff okay will come up sure got it okay so that was the sharing of report which is done via this related action web service and view url and that's it now let's see what are the other options we have so one is this configure alert that means that when you run this report 
right run frequency you can schedule it to kind of a run and it will alert you in your where you will get the alert is here you see this bell icon like document is available so what will happen is this integration will run and this kind of data will be available a kind of a csv file or an excel file will be available okay let's see that for searching our report rdcr underscore test okay which is this one no. so if you see there are one is report and one is report definition so if you click on the report it will directly run it if you click on the report definition it will open it it will open the report like this okay so let me go here custom report configure alert this is the name i will say run now okay so it will ask you to whom do you want to alert right so this report has parameters so you have to specify the parameters what it should be the from date to date location and then recipient who should get the alert and then it can also send an email right so you can write the subject and then the body and then click on okay so what will happen is when this report will run once it completes it will send a kind of this alert to them right from an integration point of view we don't use this because our reports are used for integrations we don't create reports for any user as such that's a separate team that's functional team which will do that okay so that was configure alert then you have copy which we have seen maintain excel template is is not used you can attach a template and i think this report will run and populate that but i have never used it and not the very frequent use case that you will do then you have run then you have schedule schedule is you can put a schedule here like say i want this for a daily recurrence right you click on daily recurrence click on okay and then you choose first you give the report parameters and then in the schedule you can choose every weekday or every say if i give it every two that means every every three days and then you give the time so i choose 7 am 7 am est and then start when do you want to start it i want it to run from tomorrow till end of this year or end of this month so what will happen is once you click on okay this recurrence will start executing based on the criteria which you have given here okay every 3 days 7 am est and it will execute on its own you don't have to manually run the report so that's scheduling a report we have similar feature on integration so yeah, this is the same for report as well yep clear on scheduling we never use schedule reports for integration so but yeah this is good to know feature okay then you have this test you know which will give only first 10 instance of the report then you have transfer ownership right so now if you see here in the share tab who is the report owner i am the report owner because i have created it now say i want to transfer this ownership to another user i can do by clicking on transfer ownership and i can specify any other any other user right you can specify click on okay and once i click on okay what will happen is right now i'm going to discard but this report owned by will change 
Okay. That's on that. And then we have, then it is delete audit. So for any report or any object in Workday, if you want to see what has happened, who created it, who did the update, who modified it, this is the option. This is there for every business object. View audit rail. You click on that, give the date range. Like say, I want to give from 1st of Jan 2022 till now, who has done on this report. So nothing has happened on this report because we created it today. But you get a full sequence of the things what happened on this object. Okay, calculated fields. We this that's our next topic. Favorites, you can add this report as your favorite one. Integration ID view ID is every object in Workday has an ID, reference ID. So for this report, this is the ID. By default, whatever name you give becomes the ID. Then what else do we have? Layout again, we don't use it. Reporting is again, nothing here. Schedule feature processes, no nope. copy alert solution create. So solution create is for migrating this report to another tenant, right? We will see that as part of integrations. But yeah, apart from that, translations, you don't use it, that's it. This is the high level and which is needed for the integrations for creating an advanced report. Now, this doesn't mean that this is the last time we are seeing a custom report. We will be seeing it very frequently in the coming sessions again when we will be doing the calculated fields. Next topic will be calculated fields. There again, we will create. Now, what are calculated fields is suppose, right, we run this report and I click on OK again. I have to. Here. Okay, now if you see the hair, the data is in very specific format. However, like whatever data is in Workday will come up like this. So you see the higher date is this format mm slash dd slash yy. But say the other system to whom you are exposing it as a web service needs it in some other format, right? Or say employee ID the system wants that you append underscore test in the end of so it will be employee id underscore test uh, then they want only the first five digits of this reference id or they want only whatever is there after the after any specific after the underscore right all these kind of things can be done using the calculated field, which we will do it, which will start tomorrow. Cool then, have a nice rest of the day, take rest.